Hey friends, I'm Jose. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. He said walk do. Maybe. Walk do. <laughs> Is it clean? Kind of. It's got stuff on it. Oh, no, it's dirty. I need to make it Hello, friends. I'm Jose. And I'm Nicole. We're the Espinosa Urban Farm. <laughs> and we're here in Zone 9B in Central Florida in our backyard urban farm. So, what are we doing today? We're doing all kinds of stuff today. <laughs> No, we're not. <laughs> we're doing a garden tour. That's right. We're just doing a garden tour. This is going to be our second garden tour of the 2021 season. Yeah. I was a little opposed to doing a garden tour, but everything's doing so nicely right now. I think it's yeah. the right thing to do. So okay, A lot we'll has changed from the, the three weeks ago when we did our first garden tour. So let's show you around. Let's go. All right, guys. Just wanted to walk you through the sub pod feeding real quick. Um, I did work on another little video for you guys that I think Nicole's gonna work on later on in the week and put it in. It, I actually harvested some compost from the system, which was pretty cool. And then I also fed it and showed how to kind of maintain it a little bit. But for now, um, you can see that we've taken out the plants in the back. So we had a couple broccoli or broccoli and um, what do you call it, cauliflower in the back. And we had these pepper plants we've been showing um, in the past videos. And they have peppers now. It's got a ton of little peppers. Look at that. Look at over here. Oh yeah. Look at that cluster. Nice. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and feed it. Um, so besides taking the plants that I had in the back out, I filled it with some garden soil because I wanted to fill it back up to the level that it should be filled to. Because below that level, we, ha we have some bigger holes. So right now, I've been feeding this side. So what I want to do right now is feed this side. So you see all the worms there, you see that? Mm -hmm. Look at all of them. So this is we all of our chicken, ki chicken, kitchen scraps. <laughs> chicken scraps. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's all chicken in there. Um, coffee grinds and leftover veggies we don't use. So you put your green material and then your brown material. And white, because there's white material. Well, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't bank on a career as a comedian. <laughs> this is the aerator. These blankets are super dry, this, this should be moist. So I'm gonna just, I'm supposed to soak them in a bucket, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just add water on top real quick. Right here, we have a bag of potatoes that we planted. If you come in here and take a look, you'll see that the potatoes have sprouted. We've got several potatoes in here and these are the potato greens. And then if you look around the rest of it, these appear to be a bunch of tomatoes. <laughs> pretty sure these are tomatoes. If not, the only other thing they look similar to are marigolds, but we're pretty sure they're tomatoes. I've been like racking my brain trying to figure out, we must have at some point added additional soil to this, maybe from one of my seed trays or something. I can't really figure out where this all came from, but that, that's the most likely source, so. Potatoes and a bunch of other stuff that's gonna have to come out of there. This is our little compost pile. We're actually gonna go ahead and turn this today. We figured a bunch of the larger yard waste that we have, we didn't wanna just keep trashing it. So we're just gonna throw it here and we'll see what it does. Not being too picky about it. Now over here, I have all of my Dahlia tubers and I am trying to be very patiently waiting for them to come up but I actually came home to a surprise the other day. It's kind of hard to see, but right there, it's sprouting. Nice. So I'm super excited. Awesome. Of course, I didn't label my varieties, but it just makes the surprise that much better. <laughs> Over here is that original green stock. 
we've got this is the one with a lot of basil i've got some yarrow in here and you can see the basil is doing really really well this one is that purple flowering cardinal basil it smells amazing the basil is still very tasty it's a flowering variety so that's what it's supposed to do and you can see there's a lot of empty spots I was gonna plant this out, but we are actually going to Tennessee on Thursday for a little over a week. Um, so I wanted to wait to, to start seeds until after we get back. What are you planning to put in? We're gonna do mustards and collard greens. I thought the other day, I was like, maybe I should do okra. No. Just to see what it would do and how it would do in the green stock, but Jose, doesn't think that's a great idea. So. They grow taller than that green stalk. I know, but I thought it would look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna stick to the tried and true collards and mustards for the summer in here. So this is one of our asparagus. As you can see, it's ferny. Uh, it's doing pretty good. We got another little fern coming up right here. Um, yeah, it's coming along great. Some bigger, some smaller, but they all look in, in general, they look the same. You can see I took it down some of the old tomato plants, the old beef steaks that we had. And uh, we planted some of the suckers that we've been growing roots on. Um, this is a Southern Southern Nights. We got a pineapple tomato, and these are taken off from Nicole's original tomato plants over in, in her bed. And then on the far side there, next to the pineapple tomato, we have a various crazy cherry, and those look they look amazing. They just blossom. They have so many yeah. blossoms over in Nicole's bed that I, I just had to put one down. I think it's, we're gonna have a lot of cherry tomatoes. Yeah. And then right next to that, we have our uh, one of our original beef steaks. I only got a couple tomatoes so far on this one. Gonna see if it produces any more fruit. If it doesn't, we got a lot more um, to choose from right here. These all have roots. Let me just show you. This is a pineapple, which is waiting to be planted. Uh, so you see all those roots there. They're ready to be put in the ground. Uh, and this is the way we're doing some succession planning from you know the old tomato plants that we have. Like I mentioned in our last video, my tomato video, these are all suckers that we've taken from my tomato plants. Yeah, look at this. I think we can pick some of these today, honey. We've got some blushing tomatoes. These tomatoes have been blushing. Yeah, so we haven't been uh, buying any tomatoes from the store. We've been harvesting all tomatoes from our garden here. I'm so excited because our borage has started to flower. Come in here and take a look at these gorgeous little flowers. There are so many. And they look beautiful. Yeah, all of our borage plants have started to flower. Um, just looking to see if there's any more buds that are going to be coming. They will. This one right here, you can see, is going to be flowering soon. That's what they look like when they're starting to bud up. The bees love these. They're edible. We don't eat them. I personally and he personally thinks they have a fishy aftertaste, um, but there's a lot of oils in them that can cause some people to taste that. Other people just taste cucumber. Everything else here is doing really well. These are our propagations, our aloe. The bee balm is finally coming along. It's not starting to flower yet. I actually think the ones in the back section that we're gonna show you are doing better, but that's okay. And then the rest of the pots here, this lavender, the Oregano lavender, is growing super, super well. Very happy with this one. It looks like it needs a bit of water, actually, so we'll water that. But this is growing beautifully, as well as the Oregano lavender and the borage in this pot right here. So down in this grow bag here, we have sweet potatoes. These actually have been growing for like an entire season just underneath other plants that we had in here, which was our cabbage. Now they're really starting to take off. So we'll see if we get some sweet potatoes. In this bag here are more potatoes. You can see those starting to pop through. And then back here, we've got cucumbers on both sides. And look at, I'm so excited because look at all the cucumbers that we have. These are actually probably ready to come off. Over on this side, look at that one. I call them pickles. We've got tons of pickles coming through. <laughs> Lots of little babies. Yeah, they're finally taking off. If you see um, those little bugs flying off everywhere, those are white flies. We've definitely had a large white fly, white fly infestation this year. Usually when you touch any of these leaves, you can see them flying off. They haven't seemed to really been affecting the plants, um, but we're just kind of keeping an eye on it. 
they're kind of everywhere, so there's not a whole lot we can do. If your plants are strong and healthy, I don't think it really affects them much. Oh, I dropped my pickle. <laughs> Got it. Saved it, guys. 10 second rule. Huh? 10 second rule? We yeah. got five seconds? I don't know. This is our poblano plant. Um, finally popping out poblanos. Look Lots at that. Lots of them. Got these right here. Perfect. They're small. Ooh, look down here. Down here. Look at this one. This one's the biggest. Oh, yeah. Nice. And then we got some back here. Right here in the oh, bottom. Oh, wow, look at that one. Yeah, we got quite a few. And then, nice. you know, we got some other ones coming up. that are babies. But it's doing good. Our tiny jalapeno <laughs> plant. <laughs> and look at this beautiful little girl right here. I hope you guys can see that. Oh, yeah, you can see that peach color on there. Actually, let me just take it. Go ahead and pluck that baby off. That is so pretty. I love that peach color. I want to make a salsa today. We've seen a couple of shishito peppers that are turning red, like mm -hmm. dark green and bright red. Um, I want to make a mixed salsa. Perfect. Nice. So back here on this little section, we've got our volunteer gray dwarf peas right here that are still flowering and producing peas. And then on this side, we've got, you can see the white flies, we've got more cucumbers. Um, this variety, look, I'm pretty sure these are my salt and pepper cucumbers. I like these peas. I They're know. Blossomy. You can see right here, got little pea pods, beautiful little flowers. And then in the front, I wanted to show you guys this. We are growing two different summer squash, well, two of the same type of summer squash plants in these grow bags. And because we don't want them to be flopping over on the ground, we're trying to keep them contained and keep them healthy if possible. <laughs> we are trellising them up. So as you can see right here, we've got stakes in there, some bamboo poles, and we are trellising these guys up and look at, it's growing vertically, which is super cool. It's still producing squash right now. Soon enough, it'll probably be too hot, um, but we'll see what we can get and take what we can get from these. This back here is a winter squash variety. And you can see, I feel like this looks like a little character from Mario, but there's our first winter squash. One of the things on the urban farm here that is not doing super well, unfortunately, is my echinacea plant. Um, it actually has mealybugs right now. Let's see if we can show you those. Those are mealybugs. Um, so they're all over the plant. Here on the leaves, made the mm -hmm. contrast. You'll be able to see it a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, that one just fell off. So Jose like blasted this with water this morning. Um, later today, I'll come through with a, dilute, a diluted solution of neem and see if we can, you know, help these, these babies out. Mealybugs, they look like those little white pieces of fluff on your plant. And I read that what they do is they have this like long tube that extends from their mouth. They inject it into the plant and they suck the sap from the plant. So that's why this plant is not looking like it's doing very well. Um, so hopefully we can save it. Right here we have our strawberry green stalk. It's still doing really well. There's some maintenance we need to come in and do. We were just picking off some dried leaves. Um, there's a bunch of little buds everywhere. We've been eating a handful of strawberries every day off of this. I saw one over here. But all in all, this is doing really well. We're really happy with it. Um, these plants can go for several years, so we're just trying to take the best care of them we can. But thus far, they're doing pretty fine without any intervention from us. Right here is our Moringa. Um, Jose clipped this last week and we dried a bunch to send out to his mom in California. You can see it's still really healthy, doing really well. It's got new growth. It gets little, looks like little tomato sucker growth, you know, so it sprouts out through here. Um, Moringa is a really good beneficial plant. Um, it's like a miracle plant. It has a lot of vitamins and antioxidants. So you can just pick leaves off and eat them raw. They've got a very unique taste. I like it. Jose likes it. Mm -hmm. We like to dehydrate them. His mom likes to use it for tea. I've done it in smoothies. You know, crush it down into powder and put it into smoothies. It gives it almost like a little spicy taste, like an earthy spicy taste but Moringa is very, very good for you. So if you can grow Moringa, it grows really well without any intervention from you. 
We have a lot of sand here. We don't do any amending to the Moringa. It's just fine on its own. Doesn't need our help. <laughs> Hopefully you can, can't hear my chewing across that because I was picking at it as Nicole was talking. <laughs> if you do, I'm sorry. <laughs> Down through here, we've got my fiddle leaf fig. This guy was destroyed. Um, what killed it? I forgot. That frost. Oh yeah, it got killed off by the frost. So I did chop it all the way back down to the little nub here and it has started to regrow slowly but surely. Um, you see this here is I think from overwatering. we've been getting like a deluge of rain. Um, so hopefully this guy continues to grow. Look at that bug. I know. I read about those, they're not harmful. Don't step on my mint. Over here is some mint. This one's finally started coming back. That one's doing pretty nicely. And then all back through here is where we have our herbs. I've got my dill that's drying, a huge patch of mint. Right there is thyme in the center and then my oregano patch, which I'm so proud of because last year it looked awful and scraggly. And this year it is beautiful and smells wonderful. So I'm really happy that we've gotten this herb patch growing. It just took a little while to get established. All right, here guys, we have our peppers. These are our shishito and these plants on this side are a little bit smaller than the ones we're going to take a look at right now but it doesn't matter look we're still growing a lot of peppers on them look at how how many peppers we have here look at that small but mighty yep and these are awesome they got an awesome flavor i'm yeah. really happy with these peppers um and then over here we have our peach peppers sugar rush peach peppers you can see that tiny little baby plant but still this. producing it's got three four peppers on there this one's got a little bit more oh yeah um, it's coming right along. And then these two monsters. <laughs> and then these two, right? Have, if you look inside the bush, you can see all the peppers in there. Look How at awesome this is one. that? Look at this one. Look at all the peppers in there. And. And it's big. Like, it's look at fruiting. that plant. We're still seeing blossoms. You can see like little baby peppers up here. So it's going to be really full. Here's another poblano here. I think this one's actually ready to be picked. Yep, that one's ready. Um, but you can see all the peppers through there that we're gonna be getting from these poblano plants. I'm super happy with them. Man, look at these. Oh, look at that. This is what we were oh, talking yes. about earlier. Look the at that. One. And there's another, a darker red one back there. This is gonna be part of the salsa today. Mm. You wanna grab the other one? Yes. Where did I see it? Oh, right down there. Look at it. Look at these peppers. So beautiful. So the flavor and the spiciness, if there is any spiciness, gets more intense as time goes on and they develop. Right. Um, if you pick them pretty early on, they're mild. They get spicier as they get, you know, more ripe. Look at these tiny little baby poblano oh, so cute i know these are gonna be nice so wonderful Chilo rellenos, here we come just wanted to point out this kale plant here you can see these little squiggles those are leaf miners and i mean it's kind of annoying because it makes the the kale not look as good but you can still eat those obviously this is not as marketable so if we were selling it we would try want to try and avoid leaf miners if at all possible but for us we can still eat that so i did just want to note that I wanted to show you guys, look, my chamomile is blossoming. I'm so excited. It's my first ever homegrown chamomile and they're so cute and cheery. I'm obsessed. So that's our dwarf mulberry. It's not looking very dwarf at the moment. We are going to go ahead and finally propagate this today. So we'll cut off a large chunk. We'll strip off some of the leaves and then we will pot these and try our best to propagate our mulberry tree. Check out this beautiful salvia. The flowers are so gorgeous. They have little stripes down the petals. This is our ahi kachucha pepper plant. You can see I've got quite a bit of peppers. They're starting to turn. This one here has actually turned red already. Do you want that one, hon? Yeah, take it. So we'll take that and put that in the salsa. These are so tasty, even when they're green. I love them all the way from green through dark red. 
um, this is an absolute like staple in our house now so I feel like we'll always grow these ahi kachucha peppers as you can see this lettuce plant is gonna bolt so I'm probably gonna go ahead and just chop those two down and put them in our salad for tonight it's getting real tall so that's how you know it's coming to the end of its life here is our green stock leaf it is still doing beautifully I will be harvesting a bunch of thyme again this weekend, today. I'm gonna be harvesting a lot of this lettuce. Um, it's just getting too hot here in Florida. Things are starting to turn bitter. So we wanna take a bunch of this lettuce today and then look at this oregano, kind of blending in with the other plants. But I'm gonna take a bunch of this oregano today. We'll either dehydrate it or I'll put it in some ice cubes in the freezer to use for later for marinades, soups, stews. I've also got parsley in here, a bunch of parsley, and then nasturtiums. The nasturtiums don't love the heat we have here, so they're starting to kind of come to the end of their life cycle. And I will be replanting this one with some more summer greens soon here in a couple weeks. So this is our lettuce harvest from just that green stock leaf alone. Um, it's a lot of lettuce. What we'll do is we'll throw this in ice water, rinse it off for a while, we're gonna eat a bunch of this in a salad today. We like to eat a really big salad. And then I will preserve the rest in the fridge for the next few days while we eat off of it and none of it'll go to waste. We love our leafy greens. And we're gonna enjoy it because we won't have much more <laughs> for the rest of the summer. <laughs> Microgreen time. Microgreens. Here at the back of our garden, we have eggplant and bee balm row. Um, we have some Galaxy of Stars eggplant and some bee balm uh, interplanet around the eggplant we have several varieties of eggplant we have louisiana long that, green long green and bee balm several different types too right lemon and wild there you go good job <laughs> you get a golden star for that one but i use some of the sub pod compost to um plant these starts and they're doing great i'm pretty happy with it look how full that is Along with these eggplants back here, we also have cabbages. You saw Nicole um, clean these up last time. Since then, we have ran out of cabbages. So yes. I think I want to take a couple. Okay. Um, I feel like I want to take this one and this one. Yeah, that one's nice and full. Oh, there's a spider. Stop. <laughs> You don't know Nicole is frying the spiders. Well, I would say more than frying. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> and I just went inside and took all of the lettuce inside and put it in ice water like I was telling you guys. Because we don't like to leave it out here while we're finishing filming or else it'll start wilting. So I took it inside, put it in the ice water bath in the sink, and this giant spider started crawling out trying to save itself. And unfortunately I just had to send it off to spider heaven. I mean, I say giant, it was probably about that big, but to me that is giant and I don't like it. It doesn't, doesn't go, doesn't jive with me. What a cutie, cute little cabbage head. So I'll turn this off to be. That's gonna be one food, we gotta come back for this. Yeah, cool. nice. And then we got two left. I'm gonna let those go and then we'll come back and pick these probably in a week or two. And what's our plan going. for those two spots? For these two spots, look over here. We got three more eggplant and we actually have a, another pepper plant we could plant in this area. We'll figure it out. I think more eggplant for sure. Yeah. Um, you see we have eggplant here on this side and another bee bomb. And there, look at it. We did this, what, what was it, a week ago? Yeah, just a week or so ago. So Last weekend. These have grown a little bit over here and they were smaller. But you can see once they get into the ground and their roots can spread out, they are happy. Take a look down here, guys. We have, what is going on there? That's like a bunch of flowers. Wow. A bunch of buds. Yeah, that is wild. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> We're just letting it grow but I've never seen that before. <laughs> Over here we have our kale. This is the red Russian or ragged jack kale. It's doing beautifully and in the back is dazzling blue. And over here is our bean trellis. These are all asparagus beans, yard long beans, 
Um, and look, we're starting to finally get a bunch of them. And it's trellising up, starting to fill in and look beautiful. Look at these beautiful red ones. I have two different varieties. So I have green and red. But I'm so excited. See, this is how long and skinny they get. Some of them do have aphids. Um, not really being too concerned about it. Again, if the plants are healthy enough, they should do okay. We're just gonna kind of let them go and see, see what happens. Through here we have two pepper plants marking the ends of this row. Two random kale, actually three random kale, and then some lettuce. What's our plan for this row once those lettuce come out? I was actually thinking okra. <laughs> I can do my okra. <laughs> okay, I won't put it in the green stock. <laughs> <laughs> Big word here, guys, is compromise. <laughs> He's like, heck no, don't put the okra in the green stock. I'll give you a row. Just chill out. <laughs> all right, guys, here is the OG bed with the, all the tomato plants. Everything is doing really nicely. I'm super pleased with it. Lots of tomatoes coming through. You can see down here, we've got, look at those nice cherry tomatoes, those micro dwarf flora gold micro dwarf Just tight clusters too yeah look at that nice. i think at this point all of my tomato plants have multiple tomatoes on them this here is the pineapple tomato and look at all of the fruit that's starting to grow on here all There's, these buttons have tomatoes yeah all of those already have little tomatoes there you can see down here tomato here tomato here um, and then look at all of these flowers so we are very hopeful that we're gonna get a lot of tomatoes check out that berry's crazy cherry in the back so this is what I was talking about the crazy cherry look at all those blossoms and you can see all the fruit starting to come through now too yeah all through there but look at all the blossoms everywhere you see a little fuzzy that's blossom <laughs> I think on here I have my first delta dwarf coming through right here that's one of the i'm pretty sure this is a delta dwarf plant i had it labeled as something else flora gold micro dwarf but that's a delta dwarf right here we've got southern nights this i love this one it's so beautiful i love that shape and down there This is another Delta Dwarf. Look at all those little baby tomatoes in there. There's more coming through right there, another little one. Back through here, this is a Southern Night. Look at all of these. So I was telling Jose, this is gonna be my first little branch like of tomatoes on the vine, my little first cluster. So I'm super excited. Look at, there's more up here. So lots of tomatoes everywhere. And then this is another Berry's Crazy Cherry. We've got cherries down here. And they're also starting to come through like right here. Everywhere, everywhere here. yeah. So, so far, really, really happy. This has been really successful. Obviously, as Jose pointed out to me earlier today, I did not floor to weave these like my intention was. But the way that I ended up planting them, they were kind of staggered and it just wasn't gonna work. So I've got bamboo stakes in here, I've got plastic stakes in here, I've got trellis going on. So I am just doing whatever I need to do to keep these guys upright, to support all of their branches so that we can get as much tomatoes out of this as possible. So the last area we're gonna go over is the pepper bed. It's doing fantastic, what do you think? Yeah, it's awesome. Look at how tall they're getting. They are, actually we just pulled a rack off that we had over this because these pepper plants in the back are just growing above it so I, I need to extend it higher so we can get a good cover over the the plants because they are getting beaten up by the sun what have you been using that plastic cover for behind you the pvc um, cover we actually put the shade cloth over it to try to protect it from the sun yeah well, since we're on this side look let me show you our one of our what? chinese five color peppers is coming in um they're just popping up everywhere now so that's awesome. And then we have our California Wonder 
unfortunately this one has taken a beating too from the heat the water and the sun but we have look at this oh, look down at here that. we have bell peppers coming in we have a couple there yeah. we have buttons throughout um, look at these these look great these plants look great you can see some are coming some buns right there that are oh, going yeah. to be little babies they're fruited for us and then the habanadas have blossoms or have blossoms right in the, in, in the middle of them oh nice so we're going to start getting some of these it's going to be great a little bit of pest pressure on this one because as you can see pests love plants that are like disease right that are so, stressed that are stressed exactly and right in there you can see we have an aphid issue oh wow so they they have a way of finding these stressed plants and taking care of it for you <laughs> um again this is uh, another poblano look at that we have Beautiful. a bunch of peppers here are these all poblano back through here the this tall is ones? the row of poblanos yeah okay. and these grow pretty tall as you can see um i've never really grown poblano so this is the first time um i'd probably give them more room next time in fact i might just take some plants from here and open it up a little bit depending on how much how much I, uh, these plants start producing for me you know if I start getting too much disease then I am gonna take some plants out but so far so good you and got more shishitos shishito. more shishitos and they're doing okay they're not doing as great as the ones on that side probably because they're all crowded around each other here but still producing fruit look at this down here look at that nice so I think the wind got this one I need to Oh yeah. Stake it up and bring it over. It'll help it out. So yeah, awesome. Even this one has a nice pepper coming in. Look I that. saw that. So in the next couple weeks, we're gonna start seeing a lot of peppers. Oh, look, volunteer beet. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> So that's a pepper patch. <laughs> All right guys, I think that wraps it up for us today. That is our second garden tour of 2021. I will link on here the first garden tour. So in case if you wanna see the difference between the three week span, which has been quite significant. Yeah, and for those of you guys that are looking up some sub pot info, I'm gonna try to post that video later on in the week or actually Nicole. Yeah. Nicole is gonna try to put it together and put it online sometime in the middle of the week yeah it'll well, be a quick five minute video i think yeah i look for it on wednesday i will post it wednesday because as i said we are leaving for tennessee on thursday um so we might have a little break in content i'll try and post some stuff while we're up there um it's hard we don't take a computer with us but i can try and do some stuff on imovie on my phone so right stick with us well, stay you know, tuned i think let us know if you guys want to see just a, a vlog um, we can come up with something, just some random, you know, footage. We are doing some projects though this time. We are doing yeah. some projects, but I wasn't planning on filming, so. Oh, I was. Okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have like a vlog for you guys about yeah. the Tennessee property. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, please like. Subscribe. And share our videos. That'll yeah. help us out a lot. Thanks guys. Until next time. Mm -hmm.